Hello faithful Pigeon Maskers out there. This is a features overview video of my Pigeon 3.0 cage design along with the LCD extension system. Alright, here it is, the Pigeon 3.0 cage design. I'm going to run through all the features and benefits of using this kind of cage for your Naked Black Magic setup. One big improvement for the 3.0 cage design is increased durability and this is due to many many factors. One is I increased the thickness of the carbon fiber to two and a half millimeters for both the top plate and the bottom plate and the slot struts and the uh, lens mount as well. Possibly the most important design feature to increase durability is the uh, carbon fiber lens mount. So the 3D print instead of being uh, directly tied to the slot struts via little standoff bosses. Instead, it's being mounted into the carbon fiber, being secured by the metal ring, which will take the brunt of the impact if it lands on the lens. And then these uh, TPU uh, brackets here, they slide right over the 20 millimeter standoffs. And then they have a heat insert through which these knurled thumb screws can uh, fasten it. With this new carbon fiber and TPU lens mount design, it's also a lot more rigid. Like, it doesn't twist anymore like the old one did. In a crash, this little nub here would crack and then the whole lens assembly would either fly off completely or partially and it could tear the sensor ribbon cable and it could also damage the connectors on either end. But with this one, it's a lot stronger and a lot more rigid. Another note about the lens mount, it's uh, 3D printed using nylon 12, so it's quite strong and it's a very high detail print. I spray paint this side in order to prevent any light leakage coming through the slightly translucent material. In addition, I put heat insert steel pins right here and here uh, because the shimming process is much easier if you have these little steel pins. So it's those little touches that make assembly that much easier. There's also extra protection on the back of the sensor in case the battery gets uh, ejected and shoved forward. And also it provides a mounting location. You can install a flight controller for gyro flow or other stabilization softwares. I also sell a 3D printed cold shoe mount um, accessory uh, at extra cost. And you can use this to replace these two brackets and install this instead if you wish to use STED XP. Uh, this module will fit this cold shoe mount perfectly. Another durability improvement is uh, I got eight standoffs instead of just three. This way in a crash um, there's a lot more beam strength. That means the carbon fiber is never going to flex to a point where it actually crushes the PCB on the inside. The PCB is actually soft mounted to the carbon fiber using two little lengths of silicone tubing and then extended extra length 20 millimeter M2 screws. And this way uh, the PCB can jiggle back and forth like this. You see with the old cage design um, the top and bottom plates were spaced at 15 millimeters apart and uh, the carbon fiber was only two millimeters thick. What happens in a crash is the battery and the lens it can actually press down on the carbon fiber so hard like I can't even do it with my hands. Well yeah I guess you can see the flex there but there's two problems. One is the carbon fiber can actually bend to the point where it can crack um, an inductor on the main PCB. Uh, it's, it's crazy, like the amount of forces involved in a crash. In addition, the whole PCB cage can flex. And uh, anytime it flexes, especially if you're using a semi-rigid mounting regime like this, the PCB is going to flex along with it too. And that's no good. If that happens, you're going to crack solder joints and your camera's going to be dead. The sensor ribbon cable also adds to durability because uh, it doesn't matter how many times you adjust the camera angle. The way it's situated, the flexure is very conducive to a large number of um, cycles. So that's going to be no problem there. And even if it does get, somehow get damaged in a crash, uh, it is replaceable. Having the sensor ribbon cable be oriented at 90 degrees and then coming up through the carbon means that it doesn't stick out the side as much. I know some other designs like my first 
cage um, uses the original sensor ribbon cable and it kind of came out the side which was not ideal. Another benefit of having this extended 90 degree cable is that uh, the center of gravity is improved. What I mean is that the lens mount instead of being here it's up here. So this improves the center of, uh, of gravity because oftentimes the batteries are quite heavy um, outweighing the lenses because usually you want to use as small of a lens as possible. So with most combinations of batteries and lenses, this location is much more ideal. You cannot go this far with the original cable, it just doesn't reach. So having this custom sensor ribbon cable really helps with that. Uh, in addition, the field of view is improved because the further forward the lens is, the less chance that you're going to get props in view, even at like uh, negative camera tilt. Negative camera tilt, by the way, is achieved only by removing the horn brackets. Another flex assembly that comes with the kit is the top buttons thing. Um, so in the back are some solder pads which are connected to these two mechanical switches for easy operation even while wearing gloves. There's record and on off for the camera. Uh, in addition we have a status LED here. This is usually uh, green and not quite as bright. And then this is the record LED which as you can see is quite a bit larger and it's much brighter. You can adjust the brightness of the record light via the camera settings as well. For powering the camera you have the option to either use one of these JST PH 2.0 connectors or use an XT30 and uh, the XT30 just adds a little bit more robustness at the cost of added weight. We've got a little card door here as well and what this does is prevents CFAST or SD cards from fully ejecting during a crash. In a crash the cards probably will eject um, like disconnect but that's okay because at least this door keeps them from flying out and losing your media. Another neat feature is if after removing the two thumb screws you can uh, swing both of these slot struts down and then go into travel mode. So this way the cage has a much lower profile if you need to stuff it into your luggage or your backpack while hiking. This idea I got from Michael Ischierdo with Beverly Hills Aerials. Um, and then while I'm doing shout outs, uh, I have to thank Ferdinand Wolf for suggesting the mechanical switches as well as uh, including these uh, nice big thumb screws which you can use even with gloved hands in cold weather. And then I gotta thank Shaggy FPV Ralph uh, for suggesting to use a uh, XT30 plug to power the camera instead of a JST PH 2.0. This is just a little bit bigger, it's more robust and easy to handle. One of my new additions is the integrated fan which provides cooling for the CPU. So that means when you plug in on the bench, the fan is always running so it keeps the board cool even if you're on the bench doing tests with the camera such as calibrating the shims. And this right here is the magic. Uh, with this flex assembly you no longer have to rely on Bluetooth on set for changing your camera settings. First you plug in the drone, then you plug in the LCD, and finally switch the camera on via the mechanical switch. Ta-da! So now that we're in here, I can show you under setup, software 7.3, no problem. This is a brand new camera and it works because of this LCD extension system. Not only that, it's just so much easier to do all of your functions that you need for dialing your image way better than Bluetooth. So I can hit record on the screen and it's now recording. I can then unplug the LCD extension and it's still rolling. And so when you're done flying, you can just hit the record button again and then turn off the camera. My Pigeon 2.0 LCD extension design utilized dual USB-C and this worked out in theory, but manufacturing wise, I got a high failure rate. My noob cable system utilizes a single connector, which I obviously am not going to share in this video <laughs> to buy myself some time before I get cloned. And uh, you have all the parts included in the kit in order to make this um, kind of professional cable assembly. You probably noticed by now I'm not using alpha gels. These are beta gels. This is what they look like not installed. And uh, these are an improvement because 
they no longer fall out of the cage. Alpha gels are a two-piece design, so that means when you're uninstalling the cage, oftentimes you'll lose one half of the bushing. It's very annoying. So this is a one-piece design, so that solves that issue. In addition, they're a lot cheaper. Um, so instead of costing like 11 or $12 per bushing, these are only like $3 per bushing. So you can buy a whole set of four for the same price as a single alpha gel. That means you can get spares and replacements much easier because uh, in a crash, um, the carbon fiber does cut into the silicone, whether you're using alpha gels or beta gels. And because beta gels are cheaper, it's easier to have spares or backups in, in case you tear a uh, vibration gummy. Performance-wise, these versus alpha gels, alpha gels are still slightly better, but I think the footage in some cases looks smoother with these because they're a little bit more rigid and prevents the camera from jiggling a little bit, sometimes during certain maneuvers. I have done a whole video on comparing these versus alpha gels, so you can check that out on my YouTube channel. If you wish to still use alpha gels, you can because there are extrusions cut into the carbon fiber, and then in the kit are some 3D printed spacers which uh, allow the fitment of the beta gels, but you can remove them if you wish to use alpha gels instead.